What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And before we get into today's topic, I wanted just to do a quick reminder, I am doing the RX 580 8GB giveaway right now. It's going on on the channel. Entry is in the description below, so if you haven't entered that already, please do. It was a reward for hitting 7,500 subs. 10,000 subs is our next giveaway goal. And uh, Citizen Jags, a Patreon supporter, is doing his giveaway for Star Citizen, $125 gaming bundle. So check out both of those when you have a second. But let's talk about the topic of today's video. So today's leak is out of a company in Spain or a tech website in Spain where they got their hands on these CPUs and they were able to, you know, leak some information, even though that they are under current NDA. So do we get into everything? We did get some things. So the first thing to notice is that these tests were performed on the X470s or the new chipset from Ryzen, which is not the current 370 we have right now. That's important because remember, one of uh, Ryzen's appeals is that you can buy these new CPUs and put them in your current motherboard with a quick BIOS update and they'll work just fine. But if you're losing out on performance, that's a huge issue because if you're f basically getting forced to buy new motherboards to get the best performance out of the CPUs, well, then it might as well be Intel. Shots fired! Shots fired! So when we're talking about these actual CPUs, we have to talk about um, the first exciting thing, which was the gaming performance. The IPC of current Ryzen CPUs or single core for performance was definitely behind it, what Intel has to offer. So in 1080p gaming, there was definitely a lack. However, we had seen from earlier leaked benchmarks that the gap has been uh, closed quite a bit. And with these ones, in the tests they ran, whether these were cherry picked or not, they beat seven out of the 10 games. The Ryzen CPU actually ran a little bit faster than Intel for their 8700K, which is insane. Now, they didn't say anything about this in the actual review, but I have to imagine that this was all at stock settings. The reason being is that Intel can still overclock those 8700s much higher than on the current threshold for Ryzen, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. So I do imagine with overclocking, Intel still maintains its lead, but at stock, it's still pretty impressive that these Ryzen CPUs are either performing as good or potentially better than what Intel has to offer, which is something that AMD fans have been waiting for for a long time. Now, when I was talking about overclocking, unfortunately, it does look like the most anyone was ever able to push, at least so far, using both the um, stock Wraith cooler and uh, AIO water cooling was a 4.30 overclock, and that was actually over 1.45 volts. So, for those of us hoping to see maybe one point, or sorry, 4.4 or 4.5, uh, we may not, you know, it may be kind of like a silicon lottery thing, but hey, if the performance is that good outside the box, then I'm a happy man. So the other thing uh, when we were looking through these SKUs is also to notice that when they're talking about just the multi-threaded performance, um, which we kind of already knew, but that's increased dramatically, it absolutely smashes it. And then we actually are now able to pre-order these. So I'm gonna have links for you know my affiliate link all down below. So if you guys wanna support me for all these different CPUs, but I'll have it all linked down there. Um, you can finally pre-order them through Amazon, especially if you're in the States. I'm not sure about other countries, but basically, guys, these are all really good news because I was a little let down with some of the benchmarks and things coming out because I wanted to make sure that there was enough value to basically replace the CPU. And for now, it looks like that there is indeed compelling value to buy these CPUs, even if you're currently on Ryzen. So I'm excited. Hopefully, um, I actually pre-ordered mine today, so I'm going to have it in hand here with the next week. I'll be able to test it myself and draw my own conclusions. I am going to be testing it on a current motherboard um, because I don't want to throw money into the new chipset. So I'll be able to get some uh, you know, results for you guys who are wanting to upgrade to this but not wanting to buy the new motherboards as the majority of them are fairly expensive, at least right now. The good news too with motherboards is that in their testing, um, the website says that there were none of the problems we experienced. I don't know if you guys bought Ryzen when it first came out like I did, but it was a nightmare. It was an absolute awful release in terms of BIOS updates, motherboards bricking, RAM support. It was really bad. So they didn't have any of those issues this time around. And maybe that was a isolated case, but I have to believe that AMD has learned, you know, from their previous release. And this time they're going to try and make it as smooth as possible. So anyway, guys, if you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down, but hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can see when I drop new videos. Remember, enter those giveaways if you haven't already. Guys, thank you to everyone who uses my Amazon affiliate links, my Patreon, and my Twitch subscribers. You make this channel happen. But thank you to everyone who continues to watch my channel and support me directly. We hope to see you next time here on Gear Dink.